nation is about to elect one of its oldest presidents. On Inauguration Day, Donald Trump would be 70, the oldest president ever elected. Hillary Clinton, 69, the second oldest, right behind Ronald Reagan. The candidate's health has been a point of contention on the campaign trail and raises the question, do we voters have the right to know the presidential candidate's health histories? UNF political science expert Dr. Michael Binder joins us on The Morning Show to provide some perspective. So, welcome. Good morning. Do we voters have the right to know? I think it matters, right? It, we care about these people's policy perspectives. We want to know that they're going to be there for the next four years. So certainly there, there's some level of health information that I think we have a right to know about. Now, how deep and how detailed that goes, you're going to see disagreement about. But I think it's important. You, you, if somebody isn't as well as somebody else, maybe need to give a closer look to the vice presidential candidate. Do you think it, it, at least we have a right to know how their health is as it relates to job performance, their ability to make decisions and communicate. All of those things. If they're not going to be there, maybe they die. I mean, we've had four presidents die in office due to health issues. If they're not going to be there, we need to know about the vice president. If they have an illness that might potentially limit their ability to do the job, think back to Warren Harding. He had a stroke in office. I mean, there are a lot of things that we need to be aware of. Eisenhower had a heart attack, right? These are things that can impact your ability to effectively do the job. So yeah, I think we have a right to know. And, and it's interesting because the media and social media have played a much different role today in 2016 because historically there has it, been a legacy of presidential cover-ups. You know, there, there's some people who believe that John Adams was bipolar. You know, in 1932, would America ha have elected a man who was in a wheelchair had there been a TV in every living room? Chronic back problems for JFK. Yes. And Addison's disease, and forget 32 with with uh, FDR. In 44, he was he was on death's door. So and and you know there was discussion about Reagan and the end of his second term, what getting shot and maybe early onset with the on uh, the Alzheimer's. So yeah, this is nothing new. Um, but because there's so much media attention, because there's so much you know, because there's so much act activity going on with that, we know all this stuff. But honestly, pneumonia and sinus infections. I mean. Think about the amount of people that these people interact with, Clinton and Trump, on a daily basis and a the schedule they keep, the flights they take. I'm surprised that these candidates don't get sick more frequently. I'm nervous to go up to Jersey in the wintertime because I don't <laughs> want to get on a plane because I get sick. Yeah, and, you know, and both these candidates, for the better part of three years, have kept up a grueling schedule. You make a good point. And, you know, with, with, with Trump going to be 70 and Hillary Clinton 69, gosh, there are a lot of 40-year-olds who couldn't keep up with that. Look at this guy right here. I'm one of them. And it, it, the role to be president and the campaign is unbelievably taxing. And in some ways, that's fair because the job is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You don't get a day off. You don't get to go on vacation when you're president. Sure, you might hit the golf course, but guess what? If something happens on the fourth hole, you know, you're, you're back to the situation room. So I think it's a, a fair test, but it is a grueling test. On the other side... 70 in 2016 is not the same as 70 in 1960. Very true. So, but still, it's something to pay attention to. Now, do they have a right to a modicum of privacy? I mean, you know, we go to the doctor, we go to the hospital. Sure. We sign a, a piece of paper that says, you know, unless you tell us, we can't reveal certain information, HIPAA rules. Right, absolutely. But we also do the same thing with our tax returns as well. I mean, there's a certain sense of privacy that's expected for those as well. And presidents except for Donald Trump, have traditionally released that so we, so we, the public, are aware of the decisions that we're making when it comes to electing these folks. And here's the other thing that we've got to keep in perspective. You said Donald Trump on Dr. I was, oh, you want to know about my physical health? I've got a note from my doctor here. Should I show it? We've got to keep in mind that these physicians that provide these reports are swayed by their very public patients. Absolutely. You know, and, and they're in their corners. So sure. we don't necessarily get everything we want. And it's entirely possible that the first time you go to a doctor, they have you turn and cough, you know, they listen to your heart. Oh, he's fit as a fiddle. Maybe the doctor that's been seeing you for 30 years and has a list of all your ailments and has a better understanding. And these are only physical health issues that we're discussing. Mental health is another issue that is really serious. You know, if you think back to Calvin Coolidge when his son died in office, he was sleeping 10, 12 hours a day after that. That's an obvious sign of depression. Those are things that people aren't talking about nearly as well they are with Donald Trump a little bit, but in a, in a less serious way. That gets way. to the main issue of can they do their jobs, can which is decision-making and communication. Right. And, and mental illness is important. Dr. Bender, thanks for being here. Thanks Appreciate for having it. me.